Good evening, church family, and welcome to our Good Friday prayer service. And this, this will not be your typical Good Friday service because it is going to be a prayer service and there will be involvement from your part in prayer. I was on the phone last week with uh, Connor, missionaries that we, we've partnered with in, in Ukraine, and he mentioned that uh, Fellowship Church, the church that, that I used to attend, uh, did a prayer service and he explained it and I thought that that was wonderful and wanted to bring that to us. And I didn't think there would be a better time than Good Friday to, to do that. So here we are, and I'm excited to pray with you guys tonight, to rejoice in this Good Friday. And I pray that you're excited too, because if I invited you to a, a prayer meeting or a potluck, I think you would be, you might be more excited for the potluck. But you and I both know that it is through the prayers that the Lord works through our prayers and and we see that modeled in scripture so it, it's great for us to spend this time in prayer together and, and just to grow in our prayer to to grow in our um just lifting up and pleading to to god um and our weakness as humans and we, we we're just doing what's model, been modeled for us and and paul uh, he he wrote his letters and, and constantly he begins them praying and, and thanking God for those whom he's writing to. And then uh, we see Jesus, uh, specifically in the Gospel of Luke, as we've been working through. Luke has, emphasizes his prayers from, from his baptism to uh, prior to choosing the 12. Jesus is in prayer just before uh, Peter confesses him as the Christ. He's in prayer during the transfiguration. He, he teaches them how to pray. He, he shares the, the parable of the, the persistent widow. And he's praying on the night that he was betrayed. So if anything tonight, I, I, my prayer is that it would just be an encouragement to us to, to be more comfortable in prayer, to, to pray more together as family. So right now, I pray that your family's with you, that you are all gathered around the same screen, and you will take this time to pray together and how it's going to work is we are just going to i will introduce a topic and lead into that and then give you time to pray and then i will close that topic with prayer for us and and that is basically it so we are going to go right into it i don't anticipate this ah, i probably shouldn't give you a time you might, you might turn your turn your computer off um but we're just going to go right into it. Let me begin uh, this evening by reading from us from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And I will put this on the screen for you as well. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So tonight I want to just begin by praising God for who he is and, and praising Jesus for his work on the cross on our behalf. So go ahead and I will give you a few moments to pray together, and then I will close us on this topic in prayer. I'm going to pray through Psalm 113 as we glorify God in his name this evening. Lord, we praise you. We praise the servants of the Lord. We praise the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be your name from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is to be praised. You are high above all nations, and your glory is above the heavens. Who is like you, our God, that is seated on high, who looks far down from the heavens to earth? You raise the poor from dust and lift the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people, your people. You give the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. We praise your name. Lord, we lift up this evening to you, this time of prayer together. We marvel at who you are and what you've done for us through the work of your son, Jesus Christ, on a cross on our behalf, fulfilling what we could never fulfill, becoming a curse for us, for our sake, bearing our sin, so that in him we might become your righteousness. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Uh, moving on from our praises to God, it is time to pray for the COVID-19 virus that has transformed our day and, and put us in an unusual times that we could not have fathomed even just a few months ago. So we'll spend some time praying for the virus, praying for the workers, the hospitals, the, the grocery store workers, the individuals and the families affected, and ultimately the, that the Lord would put an end to the, this virus spreading around. So go ahead and spend some time in prayer, and I will close us on this topic. Lord, we lift up the COVID-19 virus to you. Through this time of trials, through the struggles, we trust in your sovereignty, Lord. We may not understand, but we pray that you would use this to draw hearts to you. Specifically lift up the hospital workers from those that are uh, cleaning and doing laundry to the doctors, to the nurses, to the uh, ambulance drivers. Just the, the fear that, that many of them have being in harm's way. We pray that you would protect them, give them strength and courage. I read, a, I read an article of nurses that were scared to go back to rooms because some were escalated so fast. Our hearts uh, break as we, we watch the news, Lord, and, and see those mourning and the, the images on, on the screen, especially from New York. We lift those up to you, Lord, and, and pray that you would bring peace and healing to those that have been affected by this disease. We pray for the grocery store workers that are uh, putting themselves in harm's way, not just them, but, but all those that are still able to work, that, that are essential employees, that... Uh, are out and about more than those that are able to stay at home or those that are required to stay at home. So we pray that you would protect them, that the, the spreading of the virus would stop, that the curve would, would, would go down drastically as we were seeing, starting to see glimmers of hope in that. And Lord, I pray for the families that have lost loved ones. The, the stories you hear it breaks our hearts. We pray that you would comfort them. Those that are unable to mourn, because they can't be near their family in quarantine. And just the, the trials and struggles through that, we pray that you would be near to them, and comfort them, and encourage them. And Lord, we lift this all up to you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, along with the virus, I think it is more than fitting that, that now would be a good time to lift up those in leadership positions around the world. And let me read for us 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 as our lead-in to, to pray for leaders and our government. 
First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's take a moment and pray for our government, leaders in our community, and around the world. Lord, we are thankful to live in a country that we have freedoms that many don't around the world. And right now we lift up our government to you that is having to make uh, some difficult decisions, Lord. That is having to balance the, the decisions about stopping economic activity to, to encourage health. And, and where do you draw the line for that? And when do you uh, restart the economy? So we pray for wisdom to them, wisdom to our president and the, the, those around him, and wisdom to local community leaders and, and governors around our great, great country that we live in. Pray for businesses, Lord, that uh, are struggling through this, business leaders that are having to make difficult decisions to fire or lay off employees, to potentially close their doors in, in light of the uh, no ec economic activity we pray for those that are still working, that you would give them wisdom as they have to encourage employees and protect employees' health through this pandemic. We pray for leaders around our community and, and even leaders in churches around the world and leaders of homes, Lord, that are just leading their families through this. We trust your desire that, that all are saved, as we just read that in 1 Timothy Help use us to spread your name to that end. And it's in your son's name we pray. Next, I want to spend a moment praying for our community and our church ministries. So go ahead and take a moment to, to pray specifically for those, knowing that we have a great homeless population in Kern County. Now, we have a decent homeless population here in Lake Isabella as well. But let's, let's pray for that. Let's pray for our church ministries, that they are effective in reaching our community. We're, we're, we're trying to reach the lost. The harvest is plentiful. We're trying to find the harvest of the Lord and then using our ministries to do that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer for that. Lord, we lift up our community. We lift up our valley as a whole and its struggles through this virus and its struggles outside of this virus, Lord, with, with drugs and, and the homeless population. And I pray that you would use our church ministries to, to reach the lost, to reach your harvest here in our town. Show us ways that we can be more effective. Uh, show us when it's time to close and stop ministries that are not uh, reaching your harvest. And pray, Lord, that you would just use us to glorify your name in this community. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Next, I want to spend a moment praying for our, our church family and specifically those that are ill, those that have moved, those that are planning to move, those that have lost loved ones recently, and those that are that may be lonely at home uh, through this virus. They don't have family. And 
um, let's just lift them up in prayer. We, we, we know our church has had a tremendous loss uh, the last couple of years. Uh, many, many funerals, many have gone to be with the Lord, and many are mourning that and, and struggling through that grief. So let's uh, lift them up in prayer at this time. Lord, we pray for our church family, the blessing that it is to have a church family, to have uh, fellow believers around us that care for one another, that work together to glorify your name is, is such a wonderful and beautiful privilege and blessing. We give you great glory for that. And I pray for those that have uh, had a rough couple of years, Lord, or maybe lost a loved one, those that are going through illnesses. We pray for those uh, specifically that have moved. I think of Georgia Jones, uh, Mrs. Jane. We pray for the Longs that have, that have moved recently as well. Pray for the Williams as they plan to move. We just pray that you would use them, uh, help them find a church where they're, where they're at to, be, to continue in their faith and their growth and knowledge and understanding of who you are and that they would continue in serving you. We pray for uh, those that are yet to come to this church and those that uh, maybe will be called to move in the near future. Help us not uh, mourn too long, but trust in your will in those instances. We pray for those in our church that are uh, struggling with health, Lord. We lift up Nancy to you. We lift up Bud to you and, and others, Lord, Connie and, and just our entire church family. I know I'm not mentioning everyone by name and forgive me, those that are ill, forgive me for not mentioning your specific name now, but Lord, we lift them up to you. You know who they are. We pray for those that have lost loved ones and, and the grief that has come with that. Help them find their peace and comfort in you and help their hearts be drawn and longing for eternity. And lastly, Lord, I pray for those at home that are lonely. Maybe through the stay-at-home orders, they're, they're just lonely and, and want to get out and are struggling with this. Be the presence that they need in their life. And give them comfort, Lord, and surround them with your presence and peace. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, the last group that I want to, I would like us to pray for this evening is the missionaries around the world. And we will specifically lift up some of the missionaries that we are connected with and support. But uh, spend this time to just lift up those that are maybe in a, a country that is, does not have a health care system that, that we have that um, is struggling. Or maybe they have limited contact with family to, to hear, to check in with them through the spread of this virus. So let's go ahead and lift up the missionaries around the world um, right now. Lord, we lift up the missionaries around the world. We pray that you would protect them. Pray that you would be comfort in, in, to them at this time. Give them peace, Lord, as many live in countries that do not have modern health care systems and, and even hospitals. We just lift them up to you, Lord. Pray that you would protect their health wherever they are, and if they need to come home, Lord, we pray that you would provide that uh, means of transportation to get them home. Specifically, lift, lift up uh, David and Emily Rimstad in Papua New Guinea as they are back there in, in, with their tribe and as they were longing to be as they, after their time here in the States. We pray that, that you would just uh, encourage them along and give them the wisdom they need to continue growing and, and the languages that they're learning and the translation of the Bible and the ultimately the spread of the gospel that it would be received by their tribe. 
We lift up Connor and Corinne to you, who are uh, home from U Ukraine at this time, Lord. And we pray for just their family, that this would be a time of restoration here in the States, but, but also acknowledging that they long to be back in Ukraine with their family there and, the, and their church there. We pray for the country of Ukraine, Lord, as, as they are now entering into the spread of the virus in, in a country that does not have the, the resources uh, needed. We pray for missionaries we know in Vietnam, that you would be with them, Lord, in their ministry there. And we pray for the Reimer family that are, that are in Ukraine as well, that are, that are trying to get back to the States because their family has some underlying health conditions, Lord, as you know, that, that it could be very dangerous for them to, to stay in that country for, for this time. So we pray that you bring them home safely. And Lord, we just lift all the missionaries up around the world. How beautiful are the feet of those that have gone to, and to share and spread the gospel. Uh, be with them, protect them. We lift them up to you. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ and anyone else who has stumbled along this video on the internet, I'm going to leave you tonight with the words of Paul to Rome in Romans chapter 12, verses 1. Or Romans chapter 12, verse 12, excuse me. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Rejoice in the hope that we have this Good Friday. Rejoice in the hope we have in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Be patient in tribulation. It may be the virus. It may be an illness for you. It may be just the grief of, of losing a loved one. Whatever the tribulation is in your life, be patient. Trust in the Lord. Be constant in prayer. Let me pray for you before we uh, close this evening. Lord, I lift up my church family and any of those that have uh, been part of this prayer meeting. We love you. We praise you on this Good Friday, the night that your son died on a cross for us. I should say the evening, the afternoon that your son died on the cross for us. And we rejoice in the just a few days from now, the, the celebration of the resurrection, that, that he is risen and he is risen indeed. Now be with the families that are taking part of this. Encourage them, help them rejoice in hope, help them be constant in prayer together and, and take this opportunity at hand through this virus, Lord, to, to spend more time as a family, to, to grow in our knowledge and understanding of who you are and to, to, to reach out to others that, that your name may be glorified, that hearts may be turned to you through this. To your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being part of this service tonight. Have a blessed evening with your family, wherever you are. And if you need prayer, you can text this number. I'll put the number on the screen for you. You can text 760-302-1109, or you can email prayer at fbcli.org. Uh, please utilize that. We love, I, I love to, to be able to pray for you as I, as I often do, but the specifics always help with, with how I can plead with the Lord on your behalf. So have a blessed evening. I love you all, miss you all, and we will be back for sunrise service on Sunday morning. So we will see you bright and early Sunday morning, and have a great night. Take care.